Okay, um, I'm I'm literally going uh, straight from my car running into the house and then directly into a couple session, which I love. I love. I just love that people are flying from the sky. Um, <laughs> here's what we're gonna do. But first, I just want to say, um, tell us how you met because um, it has to do with uh, my book being uh, playing Cupid or my workbook playing Cupid for you guys. No, I'll let Tanner. It's his favorite tagline it, oh my gosh it is it, it is my favorite i mean the short story is we did 31 days of single on purpose and then on day 32 we got together oh, <laughs> uh, which, yeah i'm the so we we had met i mean it was literally just a handshake um mm -hmm. through mutual friends and um and and i reached out to to brie and she uh I was like, hey, let's get some coffee. She's like, ah, uh, no, I'm going to Italy for seven weeks. <laughs> I was, I was like, going oh. on a singlehood, like soul searching thing. So when yeah. the 31 Days Single on Purpose came out, I was like, this is exactly what I need right now. I just want to be alone. And so then that cultivated in Pittsburgh. And then he joined and yeah. it kind of just went deeper from there, honestly. <laughs> It's amazing it how the universe uh, cock blocks us, especially when we're single and yeah. we're dating someone. It's like, this is not what I was, I was going to go to Italy. I was going to yeah. do my eat, eat, pray, love thing. And then, you know, here I am now dating someone. Oh, it's funny. She was going to like, she had, uh, I had a uh, leasehold she had a lease hold it for a place in Bali for like 12 months. I was leaving in January oh, wow. this month. And oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Just, it was different. We both, you know, we we everyone has history. We had a history, and we when we started talking, it was just like, wow. <laughs> yeah, you guys look amazing together. I gotta say, and it's not the matching glasses. You guys just look really good together. Um, <laughs> well, tell me what's uh, happening now. We, we we could get right into kind of what's difficult, um, or wherever you guys want to start. Whoever wants to start first. Sure, I think I, I'll go first. And. Um... I think for me, I, I struggle with uh, effectively communicating my feelings in a way that um, that are accurate mm. and timely mm. and uh, with appropriate tonality. Um, that's not to say like we've I don't think we've ever yelled at each other, um, mm -hmm. but like, this is so stupid. The, I was, I was literally, I, I was on the shitter. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I'm a man. I take 25 minute shits, mm -hmm. get everything out in the first three minutes. And then I scroll for 22 minutes. Yeah. Right. That's our, uh, um, our, our safe tree. It's our uh, <laughs> quiet place. Right. It's our confessional. Yeah. But I was, I was writing an email and it was, um, I had to get aggressive in the email. So like my emotions from the email were mm -hmm. like heightened and she was like, Hey, I, I got to use a bathroom. I was, I, was like, I was like, okay, just let me, just let me, let me finish this email. And, uh, and then she's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to pee my pants. Right. And then I was like, can't you just go downstairs? We have another bathroom. Clarify in Pittsburgh. There's not a toilet. It's just a toilet in the middle of the basement. In yeah. yeah, they're called Pittsburgh potties. So it's mm -hmm. like not your first choice. <laughs> like right. Yeah. So then, um, you know, I, that made her feel a certain way. And then, mm -hmm. and then in, in me, I was like, what, this shouldn't be an issue. I just told her to go downstairs, but it was like my tonality and how I yeah. snapped at her. Um, and then it kind of snowballed after that. Sorry about the pups. That's right, no worries. Um, and I talk about like effectively communicating in a timely manner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because because I felt a certain way and I was like, you know, I wasn't, I was just like, oh my God, here we, here we go. I, I, this, is, this isn't something that we have to, we have to like have a, even a discussion over. And then she asked me, she was like, well, are you going to apologize? Mm. And she was accurate. She was right. And I should have apologized like right then. Um, but I brought up stuff like, well, you know, lately I've been met with some resistance from, you know, X, Y, and Z. And then I brought up that like, hey, 
you know, when you answer the phone, it's not always rainbows and butterflies. Like, <laughs> right. you know, like I'm in trouble or that there's something wrong or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, you know, it was just, <laughs> again, it's like, there's time and there's a time and place to talk about things. And I don't mm -hmm. think stacking issues is the right choice. Well, we were driving to dinner. I think that was, we had like seven yeah. minutes in the car to meet dinner with friends and I wear my emotions on my face. I'm like, oh my God, we're gonna have to sit at dinner and yeah. like not be able to talk about it. So, yeah. And then again, like expressing accurately how I feel when I when I get oh, you into guys froze. I don't know if it's on my side disagreement um, situations. I am at my mountain house. So, there's a tornado in my head. Uh, hopefully, it's right? on my side. And shit. And sometimes I can't recall. Hey, I'm doing a couple session and, instances uh, that I'm trying to bring you can up. Hear or them, or but I can't, you can't think see of them. Words to accurately uh, convey how froze, I'm feeling. So, and I wish. Let's see I what happens. Um, just if you're watching this, I'm sure they'll be down. back. If you're watching this, um, it'll be more of an audio experience since you're hearing the session, not okay. seeing the session. Um, you're just seeing my ugly face, but uh, you could hear the couple, but they froze. Uh, what do I do? Do I wait? I feel bad when this happens. No. I think... Uh... Maybe. Oh, it's my fucking Wi-Fi. It's me. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. Appreciate your patience. I'm coming back on. Should I? I think maybe he ended it because I don't remember seeing that before. Maybe fall in the background. Oh wow. He's back, honey. And sorry about that. I couldn't tell whose side it was on. I'm assuming it was mine. Yeah, we we were on, but then you kind of froze up, so we weren't sure either. But we can okay. see you and hear you. Is Tanner done? Did Tanner bounce? Yeah, he said he was over it. Um, oh. <laughs> Can't give us the Tanner on the toilet again? Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> nature dude, nature called. <laughs> you have no idea how accurate you are. Side note: Have you heard about hydrogen water? No. Yeah, you're a health nut. Get yourself a hydrogen water bottle. <laughs> what is that? I got to into that. Is that like hydrogen water? And and Gary Brecca is a big promoter of this. But mm. getting off topic. <laughs> okay, so uh, here I have a question for you guys. So, what is activated in you, um, mm. or what was activated in you? Let me ask you guys this. What, what's the theme as far as, uh, because it's not about um, what we talk about on the surface. It's usually something that is activated in us that makes us a feel a certain way. And then we are defensive or we're reactive. So wait, how long have you guys been together? Since June, when we did the <laughs> it's, it's It's still new, right? So you guys are still um, learning the 360 of each other. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's still honeymoon. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you guys are going to start to know each other on a deeper level as you experience what activates each other, right? So, mm -hmm. thematically, um, and, you know, the, the, the toilet um, on the shitter exchange of someone wanting to use the restroom, you're in there. That's a great example because it's just such real life, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not this big thing. No one did anything wrong. And it's usually in the kind of the, uh, these kind of subtle everyday life things that, that, um, that, you know, explosions can happen. So, what do you think? What's thematically being activated. Uh, Tanner, you go first in you in this relationship. And then Brianna, you tell me. Thematically being activated when we like have disagreements. Is that yeah. What whenever there's conflict, uh, whenever you're like, oh shit, I'm being like emotional or whatever, or angry. Um, what is being activated in you? What's happening underneath? Not what's set on top. Usually. Yeah. Um, oh, probably a lot of stuff, probably that inner child. <laughs> You yeah, know? no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, I'm the, I'm the second of four, uh, kids. So upper middle, it's so always like craving attention. Mm, and, okay. So I definitely like, I 
have I have some troubles, some issues with with that. Like, um, I guess not not getting attention, not being heard. And I'm not even saying that that Bree does this. I think it's just like an overarching issue that's been here since since childhood. Um, well, so so how, how how does that uh, how does that come up? So. Um, you not being hurt, or how does that come up in the relationship? How does she activate those childhood wounds? Ooh, you're back again. There we, we go. See you. Oh, did I freeze again? Sorry. Um, how, how does that act? Like, what does she do to activate those childhood wounds? Huh. Um, I, I don't feel perfect to be, to be like really genuinely honest with you. I think it's me not sharing my perspective, especially in the moment. Um, yeah. And, and for, for me, <laughs> I'm such a dude and I can't multitask. So like if she's, chirping at me and I'm in the middle of doing something that's important to me. Like then my, I go out of balance mm. and then I revert back to that little child going, Hey, 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 look at me, you know? And how, so how does that manifest in action? So like, uh, for example, using the toilet example, was there something that activated you, um, that she did or said or, or didn't do or say that made you, um, kind of get uh, or I don't know. Yeah. Again, I think it's really unfair, <laughs> but, uh, well, it's she's, not I'm just trying to explore what it is. Yeah, you know? No, no. She, she said she had to use the bathroom like three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so deep in an aggressive email that it like the aggression transferred to her. What, 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 when you say unfair, what, who was unfair? You or her? I, I was, I think I was unfair mm. for, for snapping at her. What was the snap like? What did you say uh, that was a snap? Uh, word for word verbatim, I said, fuck, we have another ba bathroom downstairs. And then she responded with, are you serious? And then went downstairs to use the restroom. Okay. Um, sorry, I missed you, man. Sorry about the connection. There's a, there's a lot of uh, wrenches in this process today. I apologize. Um, <laughs> And so, Brianna, what about you? With things being thematically activated, activating you in this relationship, what would that be? Um, I think across the board, if there's a disagreement, I'm coming from a place of fear or like mm. a, a scared mm -hmm. place. Um, I don't want to say f like fight or flight, but I immediately go into like, I need to protect myself right now because something right. bad might happen and I right. could get hurt physically yep. or mentally. So it's, I know for me, it's very fear-based. And so what does that look like in action, in words? Is you stacking issues seven minutes before dinner, is that coming from a fear, fearful place? Um, well, that was, I was, stacking was issues. saying. Oh, you were stacking. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. She got mad at me for being on this. Sh well, not even mad. She just said something about <laughs> me being on the shitter. And then I snapped at her. And then when she I, wanted me to apologize. Yeah. And then I gave her a half-assed apology and said, by the way, here's how I've been feeling lately. Mm -hmm. here, here, okay. So can, can, can I just say real quick? Um, I love that you guys are actually not only aware of what's happening, but um, taking ownership. So Tanner, you're, I, don't, I don't sense any defense from you. I, I sense you're like... I was on a shitter. She did this, activated this, and um, I acted in a way that I shouldn't have. Like it's it's total ownership. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's certainly like that after the fact. But not. But right. I wish I could be better in the moment. I'm gonna end this because it's just too, the reception's bad. Oh, there we go. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Yep. That's okay. I was just saying, I was, yeah, I, I, I think I am good at taking ownership. Um, but it's, but it's after the fact and I wish I could be better in the moment. Okay. Hey, Brianna, um, what do you think about that? Is that him, him realizing things after the fact? Um, and I'm assuming when he's reactive, he's not like, 
throwing chairs and going crazy. I mean, he might be a yeah. little angry. Mm-hmm. He might say some things. Um, and then he catches himself later. Um, is that okay with you? Does that feel safe? Or do you want him, like, what do you want to change, you know, as far as his responses? I've always thought he is really great at taking ownership. Honestly, I kind of aspire for that because I can, I think when I get into my like fear based mentality, I won't do that because I have to protect myself and there's, that's all that matters in my head. Um, but when he, I, I have always trusted him, even when we have a disagreement that eventually it will be okay. Mm. And it doesn't, um, like scare or worry me in a deep way most of the time um like i like we slept we went to bed last night we cooled off we talked more this morning and then Mm -hmm. it was it was okay so i always know that resolution will come i think i will say because in my head the the toilet was so small and simple when we Mm -hmm. talked in the car and he didn't want to apologize that was on part of the first time i was like oh what (laughs) Because that there was like a 15 minute period before we got in the car, maybe. And we just kind of like stayed in our own lanes, like cooled off, I guess. And when we got in the car and we didn't see eye to eye on just like a, a little apology, I was like, oh, what? So wait, Brianna, I, what, what, what did the apologize mean to you? Meaning, you know, when you said, OK, are you going to apologize? If he didn't, what does that mean to you as opposed to if he does? Yeah, so I think if he didn't, um, it was like a fear of like, okay, uh, is this okay the way he talked right. to me? Right. And if that if it's okay now, will it get worse down the road? Um, yeah. And having experienced situations like that, because it takes two to get to a point in a bad relationship, and I think that starts with letting red flags feel yellow and then just like accepting them, and so. For he and I, like, I care about him so much. I think little things like that mean so much more because it all starts from somewhere the longer and you grow together yeah. as you live life. So to me, apologizing was just like easy and simple for something easy and simple. So there was less piles of shit for lack of better words. You know? And um, of course, because of what this is, um, I'm a lot more direct. Um, also, I'm one person. You know, wearing two hats, therapist, coach. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be super direct because we don't have much time. The connection is fucking horrible. (laughs) Up in the mountains. And I want to try to help you guys as much as I can. Oh, I lost it again. Okay. No, you're back. You're back. Yeah. So, you know, because I feel like ET trying to phone home, right? With fucking (laughs) balloon foil on my head. Uh, I want to be very direct because I want to really be of service in any way that, that I can. And also you guys get a whole different session. I'll be at home. The connection will be, will be amazing. So, so I do two sessions per couple. So um, this is cool. the only one. Brianna, I, I, I want you to look at why you need the apology from Tanner, because when you tell someone or demand someone to apologize, um, it's almost it's almost not an apology because you're wanting something. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and if you're saying the apology, the wanting the apology is self soothing in a way, because then it makes you not jump to the future tripping. Like it, it, it seems like you need the apology almost to self soothe your own fears about the relationship. Mm-hmm. Not so much that you want him to apologize. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense because I felt like if there wasn't Fuck, an I apology, I was just going to stay shut down a little bit. Like, and we were going to dinner to meet friends. So, and and also, yeah. but, but like, if if he apologizes on his own, um, wouldn't that mean more than you asking him to apologize? And then he does it because you asked. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So he, here's what I think the the work is, um, and this is with any couple. Um, Tanner, and this is just about what we're talking about. Tanner being responsible for him realizing. Um, what is activating his, you know, childhood wounds, right? And then uh, self-soothing, taking a beat, and instead of being reactive, like how can I um, give myself that instead of wanting that from Bri- Brianna, right? And then Brianna, the fears that you have, is this going to work? Where is this going? Whatever, all the fears that you have based on your story and your previous experiences, um, yes, he's doing his 
best to make you less afraid, but ultimately it's kind of your responsibility to overcome those fears. Does that make sense? Did I freeze? Yeah. Yes. Back, I said, yes, he's doing his best to make you not afraid or less yeah, afraid. But, but it's Brianna, it's your responsibility ultimately to overcome those fears. Yeah. I definitely struggle with that. There's yeah. a, yeah. like specifically there's for my history, there is an alcohol abuse element with mm -hmm. the past partner. And I, so I don't have the greatest relationship with alcohol, not personally, but around it. Like when, others are drinking I start right. to get nervous and think about we fearful things and when like if he has like a drink or two like we were on vacation and I just went into this space of like oh my god I could die right now this could get really bad wait, wait, and wait, I tried wait, talking wait, hold on that's a great example of um um you know uh, uh assuming Tan I'm assuming Tana doesn't have a drinking problem correct no, not but we hardly drink at all yeah <laughs> He has a couple beers and which is just normal, no problem, but your body is seeing that as a a a a, a bomb or a red flag. It's being active. Yeah. Your nervous system is being activated. Something is wrong. And then you you start to distorted thought, "Oh my god, the sky is falling." Mm -hmm. So he can do his best to help you by you explain to him what's going on, but it is your responsibility. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And ultimately the relationship will be safe enough where it's going to be a corrective experience and hold that space for both of you guys as you yeah. guys continue to build this. Does, does that make sense? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I but agree. I, 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 love, I love that you're aware of this and because um, a lot of people, they don't even share this stuff with their partner and then they just get mad. So like, like for example, Tanner has a couple beers and someone says, the fuck are you doing? And then suddenly he's like, what? I'm just having some, and suddenly it's a huge fight. And it's all surface based instead of, oh, you're having a couple beers. Here's what's happening for me, Tanner. I was with or an alcoholic or my family was like, there's alcoholism in the past. It's my responsibility. I, you know, whatever, here's what I need. And then he can do the best to support you in that. But that communication is vital. It creates bridges. Yeah. I, I do know and trust and believe that she is coming from a place of love. Yeah and trust when she does bring these things up or she wouldn't right yeah, yeah. I, if i didn't care to tell you i just wouldn't tell you yeah, yeah i would just say okay bye you're drinking see you later <laughs> yeah it's like i i in a sense i do feel honored that like she tells me hey i'm not feeling comfortable with you drinking right now mm. and then depending on how many i've had <laughs> I either go, well, this isn't a big deal. Why are you like this? Or I understand, honey, I love you. I'll stop. It, let me ask you this, uh, Brianna, when you, when you, uh, for example, using this beer situation or the drinking situation, um, how are you disclosing this information? Are you saying, stop the beer? I don't like this because it's doing this in me. Or are you saying uh, like, you know, it's not you, but here's what's happening. Like, how are you like telling Tanner this information about the, yeah. what, how you're being activated? Well, I think I think initially I'm more passive than I should be. Like, I, like I, this lap, I think of just more when we were on vacation, I was like, Oh, you're, you're drunk. Like, or I could just be like, and like, he had like two cocktails on the beach. Like we were having a good time. Um, I could have said directly, I'm just starting to feel really anxious. I get to that yes. point. Yes. Like we continued this conversation and I started saying like, I'm just trying to tell you how I feel like I was starting to feel like life or death. Like I'm just anxious and I know I, I know I shouldn't be. I just, my mind goes like this. And then I think of like mm -hmm. certain instances in the past and, and, but it's getting there for me is difficult. Cause I think when I start to feel that way, I go into how do I protect Brie right now? Yeah. And that yeah. means pushing other things away. And, and like, I, I, and, and, just not rationalizing as much yeah. until you get to a more open communication. Principle. So when you're, when you're in that kind of fight or flight state, um, what do you need from Tanner to ground you? Probably just like a hug. <laughs> like, what like, I was, you know what I was going to say? <laughs> it's probably not words. You're absolutely right. Because yeah. 
Yeah. Here, I, I want you to, and, and this is something I need to do as well. Um, I want you to focus more on her body than the words. Um, and I've learned this over many uh, relationships where it's like, it's almost like say nothing, but just hold her. Mm-hmm. And it's like things change and dissolve very fast as opposed yeah. to log- logically. Well, what am I doing? I'm just having two beers. Like, what do you, and, we, and then it, it's all logic based, but bodies are still activated. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's, makes hard, to do, man. it's hard to do. I, I, I am very logic. I am very um, defensive. I go at um, my partner like a lawyer. And so <laughs> drop, drop all that and know that my par- partner is being activated. And then, hey, can I just hold you? Huh. And then just like holding and, and seriously, man, that dissolves. Cause, cause, cause what's happening is it's not a logical experience. It's a mathematic experience. Um, whether we're talking about childhood wounds or people being activated because of addiction or having, you know, um, addiction in their family, um, it's the body panicking because it feels threatened. It feels unsafe. And so when you try to convince someone, it's just slippery, but if you just hold someone or make them feel safe, you're just going right to the core, you know? So then that's where, again, I can recognize where I need to work. In those instances where I feel like, whoa, why, what's happening? Why am I getting, you know, why why is the arrow pointed at me? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm not, I'm not trying to run forward towards that arrow. Sure, sure. (laughs) So it's like, for me, um, and even, even the other night when, and like all she needed was a was a um an apology it was just like hard to muster yeah, that of course. Hey, listen, yeah. listen listen if someone says john you need to apologize i'd be like the fuck <laughs> my ego would kick in i'm an aries i'm fiery i'd be very defensive and i would be like well don't tell me to apologize i'll apologize when i feel like it you know like that would be the default, right so yeah, yeah that that's i get the i get the struggle in that right if someone's saying aren't you gonna apologize well if you could say that, then no, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, so I think the, the 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 so here here's I don't think she needs an apology. I think what she needs is to feel safe. And I, I we got to that point. I think another it's almost like snowballs into other arguments sometimes mm-hmm. too. Because mm-hmm. I when I'm you know I just need a hug. Like I just need help calming down because I feel like I'm going crazy and I know I'm going crazy and it's irrational. And it just doesn't feel good, but, um, but then here I come with the fuel <laughs> put on your fire. <laughs> well, I didn't start it in the best way. Oh, you're drinking? What? Um, yeah, no, like, no, wait, wait, real quick. But even something as subtle as tone. I mean, you're right. If you start something as like, uh, you're drinking, uh, you're dr- you're drunk. That that's already you're already pointing a finger. Exactly, you're, and you're, that's where I. Like you then, once we get to a point where we're having honest conversation, I got to backtrack and be like, I rec- like, I've got to bring it up in a bit, like just directly say, I'm starting to feel X, Y, and Z this, like, it's not your fault. Because when I mentioned just wanting to feel safe or just needing a hug, like for me, physical touch with alcohol was a hurtful thing. Mm. And so yeah. like, I feel like I'm relearning, like, it's okay. This is a different experience. It's just a few, you know, beers on the beach or whatever. But you, and you do an amazing job at making me always feel safe. So when I do bring this up, I think you think, well, where, like you, you said once, well, where am I lacking? You don't feel safe and you don't feel safe now. And I think that's a disconnect too. Cause like, Every day in our relationship, he makes me feel secure mm-hmm. and safe. It's yeah. the alcohol that makes my anxiety go from a past experience. Even though he makes me feel safe, I still feel this way. That I think that confuses you. Yeah. Right. Hey, um, with the alcohol, tell me briefly. Was it what was it? Dad? What was it? Uh, Ex partners? What was the the relationship with alcohol? Uh, my ex fiance. A few. And years. when he drank, uh, he got abusive physically, yeah. or what happened? Yeah, he would. Um, he was into different drugs and alcohol all the time, and he would get physically abusive. And we had like, well, he did. I didn't had guns and knives in the house and stuff. So, can you, I'm was, sorry. Can you repeat that? Because you froze. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, 
when he would drink or do whatever drugs he was doing, uh, he would get very aggressive and uh, physical, um, abusive. And um, so. So here, yeah. here, here's what your body's doing is trying to protect you. Oh, you're frozen. Gil wants attention. I know. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Sorry. So here, here's what um, this session is like skipping a stone across the lake. <laughs> Your body is trying to protect you. Um, so when it, you know, not, it's not only Tanner, it's wherever, you know, in the world, alcohol, whatever, and you, you sense threatened. Um, you got to convince your body that with Tanner, that it is, that your body's safe. So part of it is on him in that he'll create a safe space, um, meaning he could have a couple of drinks. Like your body has to allow Tanner to have a couple of drinks and realize, oh, he's not picking up a knife. Nothing's happening. He's actually lovely and he's holding me and he's it's loving. And there's so like you have to I, I think you have to give your body that experience. You're back. I, think you you give your, I think you have to give your body that experience. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So if you start pointing fingers at him, you're not going to give your body that experience. Instead, um, let him know what's happening in you. And then it's going to take courage, but try to be open to that experience and trust that he's going to provide a safe space for you. Let him know what's happening in you. And then that's when you froze. He might not oh, be able to see us yeah. now. I think we're gonna have to do a. Um, we'll have to do a next session because this is uh, uh, the reception so bad. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys. Be well. Are you there? I don't think he can hear us. Hey, John, you there? Hey, oh, Hello. Hi. All right, we're going to yeah. end. Um, know you know what? We're going to end, uh, and uh, we, we will do this again. I'm just going to send them an email. Uh, and this is this is my life. Bad connection, remote, uh, and, you know, it is what it is. So um, I apologize. <laughs> I'll try to make this episode as um, painless as possible, but I still think we, we got a lot out of it, and um, we will do a part two.